First Trials Tournament, guys. We have two more matches coming for you. It's going to be Firebat versus Oskaka, followed by RDU versus Super JJ. They're playing for a spot in tomorrow's top eight. Everything's on the line. There's no more losers bracket shenanigans going down after this. It's, uh, it's do or die. And, uh, well, we finally get to see Firebat again, the only paladin of the tournament. And, uh, well, followed by that, we'll see the only non-face shaman of the tournament in Super JJ's lineup. So, some interesting moments yeah. uh, that's to be had. Certainly. Uh, now we get to see Oskaka take his lineup, which, uh, don't be fooled. Right now, we just uh, had the uh, life coaches' uh, classes. Oskaka didn't get to change his decks for the lower mm -hmm. bracket. Um, we're going to have Oskaka take his tried and true lineup with the Druid, Shaman, and the Rogue. Up against Firebat's interesting take on the metagame. We don't see Mage very often, and we don't see Paladin at all. Mm -hmm. Which is, again, a very weird state to be in. You know, we have one Hunter, one Paladin, one Warlock. And each of those guys are being champions for it. Uh, Firebat won his series, even though um, it wasn't the, the series on stream. Which might be to his benefit. Who knows? We still don't know what's in Firebat Shaman deck exactly. Yeah. The other thing uh, is that I feel like Oskaka has been struggling a bit with his Shaman deck. Um, it is a little bit less aggressive than the others because he is running the uh, Tuscar Totemic. And for decks that do want to prevent as much damage as possible, that is one card that doesn't actually do anything immediately when it's played. And it's not as aggressive as some of the other cards in the regular list. I think a lot of the other lists are including Wolf Rider over that card. And that small difference, I think, has, um, well, that and largely the terrible draw energy that he has. Um, has led to him losing a, a lot, most most of the games, maybe all the games, with that specific deck. But on the other hand, I feel like Firebat's very aggressive decks might punish that slightly slower aggressive deck uh, also in the Shaman that Oskaka, that Oskaka brought. Yeah. yeah, so we'll see if it ends up paying off. Um, I don't really think the Shaman's that bad of a deck. I just think it's like you pointed out at the very end of the series. He just He's been caught the uh, unfortunate side of some draws and some sequences. Um, not to mention the just lineups. Like in, in this kind of tournament, a lot of people are going to be looking at the draws and, like, for example, Savitsa's game where he drew two flash heals, two circles, uh, a Twilight Whelp, and a Shadow of Death or something like that. It was like <laughs> nothing. Um, but he put those cards in the deck. So it's like, it, mm -hmm. it's one of those things where how you prepare a deck in a volatile format that's not refined at all. Uh, is completely on you. So if you're the ones drawing inconsistently, you could put things to improve your deck's consistency at the cost of maybe some power uh, or tempo. Mm -hmm. That's why it's really cool to see someone like Firebat bring weird stuff. I'm talking about like Jeweled Scarab and Agro Paladin. I, I wasn't anticipating that at all. Um, it's not something that immediately sticks out when you look at like the absence of Haunted Creeper or Shield of Minibot, but that makes... A lot of sense given uh, if he can capitalize on the draw. So I, I'm, I, I really loved seeing some of the innovation um, mm -hmm. as well as some of the strong play so far. Some of the history from earlier today, uh, Firebat uh, went to the loser's bracket as he lost his opening game against RDU. Um, but he did beat Kalento while in the loser's bracket. Um, I just wonder if these aggressive decks work and maybe he got a bit unlucky or perhaps, you know, by some chance, Kalento's Hunter had some trouble winning a game again. <laughs> uh, well, he did win one game with the Hunter, at least, mm -hmm. on stream. Um, so it can't be completely the Hunter's fault, but there is a chance. There is yeah. a chance that it was the liable factor. Because uh, I imagine if he played uh, Desert Camel, is that it? it's like, it, it would definitely pull I think one that. drop. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't know, man. My, my brain's mushing at this point. But uh, <laughs> assuming he played the camel, it was, there's every deck has viable one drops that come out of Firebat's deck. So, except Druid, I think Druid has been the only class exploited with the camel so far. True, true. Um, Druid usually runs spells at one mana. Here we go, Shaman versus the Paladin. Mm -hmm. Paladin with. The coin and the curve, Oskaka getting very much the same kind of draws he did in the previous series. Maybe that'll prove right now. And it does. Interesting. Yeah, considerably. Yeah, that was like really That's bad. That's an amazing oh, hand now. 
One, two, three plays. I actually don't even know how Firebat's gonna come back from this. This is a, this is a ridiculous opener. Well, um, he, he's got his own draws, and plus he's got like cards like Flate Knife Juggler, Flame Juggler. Those things can really have big impact. Um, just take a look. Like you're gonna use one abusive to go into the Knife Juggler for sure, and then the other one doesn't do anything. So, oh, it does two damage the next turn. Yeah, I guess. I I don't think um, I don't think the abusives are really going to be used to trade up, like the. This this Paladin deck, everything dies to like one or two damage. Everything, right? The the exception to that is when minions get like buffed with kings, and in that case, you either choose to ignore them, or um, or you just kill them with a big spell. I don't think you'd ever have the case where you're killing big minions off. So I like the abusive here because you hide it behind the Feral Spirit, which means you get two trades, or you you get two attacks with it. So a four damage abusive is as good as, as you can hope for. Smirk. Okay, so instead of choosing the Hunter, he chooses the Druid because he feels like he's going to need that hero power to impact the board. He's right. He does need that hero power to impact the board. And Oskaka immediately plays this. Wolf Rider. Does he want to play Flame Drugger instead? He does. Yeah, he can snipe definitely. a 2 1. Anything except face is good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Never lucky. Oh, man. I don't know, man. That's just hard. That's hard to swallow. <laughs> Every target was good. <laughs> One out of five. Yeah. It was like that and the uh, Yasir Awakens, too, when he was playing. <laughs> He's like the one out of fives. Just keep wrecking him. This Shaman is just going to get so much damage in. It's going to be so hard to, to race against this. Look at that. If, if he clears this board, he's at 16. Here it comes. Here, Here we go. go. It's the face. Oh, it was on its way. Oh, is it oh man. That <laughs> way, bro. That way. Yeah. All right. Uh, what do we do here? I guess we divine shield like a uh, you know the leper gnome. Yeah, sure. He can't out heal the hunter hero power either, and, and so that means he's working at effectively twelve HP. Oh <laughs> God! With more damage being drawn, uh, heart. Oh, less than that. Less than heart. that. You you hit for eight this turn. You have a leper gnome, which is essentially ten damage. Okay, you, you don't want ten to damage this turn, and don't you're holding lava burst. Oh, you're saying uh, go for the horse rider right for the eight damage. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and you're just gonna put your opponent in a situation where he needs to respond immediately. Worst draw. Okay, it was a good try, but um, <laughs> the flame juggler just making sure that he takes an extra four damage and counting because of it. If he doesn't clear, he's actually dead. If he does clear. I don't know if there's actually a sequence where he can uh, kill the next turn, though. Right now he only has uh, 9 on board. and if, if the Shaman draws literally nothing, um, True Silver can buy him one extra turn. Oh yeah, True Silver Champion. Which might be the difference maker. That's the only way he doesn't lose, so... Yeah. Can't Divine Favor into it, though. Nope. He has, to, he has to top deck it, but we know that he had two from his opening game earlier. So, okay. this is this is True Silver only here. Nope. Okay. You oh, no, no, the Hero Power, the Hero Power! It's not oh, True Silver right, right. only. The, the Hero Power keeps him alive for one turn. But you have so many chances! Oh no, he's overloaded for two, so he only has five mana, so if he Ancestral Healing, he only has one mana really to play with if he wants to use the hero power. Mm -hmm. Oh man, he didn't hit it. Minion! That's a bad draw. Another minion! Another minion! not bad. But you could actually die here. It is possible. Yeah, and he drew more cards, which means Divine Favor gives another card possibility to lethal. But the, um, the, the reason the Lepernome is really good is because um, 
the paladin basically <laughs> takes a 50 50 on losing the game for each minion played <laughs> it's gonna oh, chuggle it's so <laughs> funny oh my god <laughs> you have to hit the face now you want every juggle to hit face yeah paladin needs two more damage too well, you, I think you definitely want to play Lepernome. The question is if you want to play Knife Juggler and Lepernome. Because if you play Knife Juggler and Lepernome, you get dump more cards to Divine Favor is less of a chance, and Lepernome guarantees two damage. Mm -hmm. So he'd be at two the next turn. So he wants to play Juggler and Lepernome to play around Divine Favor. This is our world champ. And also to hit the 2-1. Oh, Whoa, that's a world champion dagger. But that's a world champion draw! The world oh, champion! Man. Gets answered by it. Oh my goodness! Clash <laughs> of the Titans. That my was an goodness. amazing game. Yeah, that was really. Cool. Well, not for Askaka. He can't see the win of this shaman. He's probably the <laughs> shaman right now. But uh, for for Firebat and for the audience, I think it was an amazing game. That was sick. Askaka very very kind to sacrifice his sanity for the for the masses. He is. You know, he already won. He says, you know what. Uh, yeah, people if I forgot a little bit about Firebat. Everyone knows me by now. <laughs> but uh, you know what? He's going to have to stop giving up handicaps if that's the case because you, you don't want to give boy. too much leeway to a deck or to a lineup as aggressive as Firebats. He's going to go with the Mage up against the Druid. Is Firebat streaming from a gym? Stream from a, no, he's streaming from his house. Uh, um, he moved okay. back to his house uh, a couple months ago, I think. Okay. In Michigan, Detroit. Damn. All right. Well, this is actually a pretty decent start for uh, for both players. Yeah. The mage doesn't have mana worm still. Oh, my God. That's a turn one emperor. Yeah. But you have nothing else. No, it's a turn one emperor. But you have nothing else. There's only one way that Emperor gets killed here, and it would be like Arcane Blast and Perfect Arcane Missiles off a of Sorcerer Apprentice being played. Like, just come on. Come on. You gotta do it. It's like a guaranteed two-turned Emperor, and you shut down all the tempo the Mage could have. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm just saying you don't have anything else to follow up uh, after this turn because you have no minions. It's, it's just unfortunate for... Oskaka, as, as fortunate as he is to get these cards, he doesn't have any minions, and if he just picks up other cards, other spells, he's not. he, he needs actual ways to impact it. Firebat, yep, saying, alright, that's cool. Yeah, he has to do the, um, the Sorcerer Apprentice uh, Arcane Blast play, which is clearly not going to work. You can also uh, Loot Hoarder. Oh, no. But... No way. Well, because he can also source his apprentice the following turn if he picks up, like, Frostbolt. So then he has Arcane Blast Frostbolt. I mean, it's all, it's all relative based off what he thinks is the best option. And now, the Wrath. Yeah. So, that gives the select to be three, force to be four. I mean, it's not the most intimidating hand size. Oh my god. <laughs> Roll a dice, boys. 50 50. You could also Spell Slinger. No. Spell Slinger would be a catastrophe. Yeah, I'm just. Uh, look, Crip, our job is to explain different plays of whatnot. Okay. All right. Yeah. Do. All right. All right. Well. But you arcane missiles first, 50 50 to hit it twice. You can also just snipe it straight up and play loot hoarder, which would be the That'd dream. Be sick. Yeah. One out of eight there. Mm. If you hit it one time, would you still loot hoarder? You probably would. Yeah. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh my god. Missed it. He's the one. Yeah. Thorsten doing his best hula hooping, just trying to dodge it. Yo, still no minion. Mm. Well, Harrison Jones is going to upgrade to a uh, Lost Hulse Rider next turn. There it is. 
Man, Firebats had to deal some very uh, uh Yes! Finally! We did it, boys! <laughs> three turn Emperor. <laughs> Fortune Nature for three, swipe for two. <laughs> this is so insane. That is a, that is a six mana combo yep. for 21 damage. <laughs> if he plays the Harrison Jones and it goes unanswered. That belongs in a museum. Oh my god. I I feel like really bad oh. for Firebat, but this is so entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see what the spell slinger draws. Wanted for Dead both. Alive. I'm sensing an innervate. Oh, sacrificial oh, okay. pact. Oh, gives him the, a useless card, and then Firebat gets something. I well, th there is there are two playable demons. Uh, there is Illidan and uh, Imp Master, I believe. Uh, you mean, you mean in the entire game right now? Um, well, in 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 this format. Otherwise, you could unstable portal a uh, a demon. Oh, you mean just straight up without? Uh, yeah, like like from like a mage's perspective, mm -hmm. because you, I was thinking like, well, warlock does a lot, but. Well, I'm actually uh, a bit surprised by that. I thought he would uh, perhaps play the trap and just ping. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think Oskak is playing the farce here, but maybe he is. Oh wait, he could have got a flame imp here off the, uh, off this thing, or a blood imp. Mm -hmm. Some HP. Zombie Chow. No, nope, it's over. Well, doesn't matter. Force of Nature's Harriet War on turn six. Oh, oh man. G G. Wow. Well, uh, you know what? Fast games all around, and it's a tied series one to one. Exciting things all around. So, uh, looks like the druid's out of the way, meaning no more druid for the rest of the series. Kick mm -hmm. it to the curb. Uh, we have Firebat's mage up against the rogue or shaman, or Firebat can finally unwrap the shaman and take her for a spin. We didn't get to see the shaman at all earlier. Are you sure about that? Yeah, so he played the Paladin first game, lost, played Paladin one, and he lost twice with Mage. All right, well, it's going to be the Shaman Mirror. From what I remember, which is obviously my memory's not so great right now, but I, I, I think that Firebat was playing a very standard Shaman list, while Uskaka has um, more of like a zoo list with the uh, Tuskar Totemics. Yeah, the, the Tuskar Totemics is really interesting inclusion, just because you don't really know. Like, what's what can really come from it? So, how is it consistent? You know, maybe it's just because he wants to play a more board centric aggro shaman. Well, with the hex as well, that's that's probably the case, exactly. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm just kind of curious what the exclusions are. Well, you lose crackle, that's the first thing that drops. Um, that's two slots open, and then the oh, the flexible spots are would you rather have flame jugglers, elemental destructions? Um, knife jugglers. Uh, some people even still run like the old school whirling zapomatic, but I, I don't. I don't really think it's that particularly effective these days. Rock biter to help clear a little bit of what's going on. Um, point out the hero power. Firebat yeah. gonna really take this threat seriously because he knows his opponent's on the overload, so his options are limited. The other option was to uh, the Force Rider face, I believe, and with that you could, uh, you could Lightning Bolt. Alright. Mm -hmm. Well, do you play both these one drops? Probably, you don't, you're still not burdened to because you can get Abusive Sergeant to do other stuff with the Leopard mm -hmm. Gnome. Board, but probably going to get traded into. So, if you want more totems, totem played wonder. both. The totem is not bad. Yeah, I mean, next next turn you're probably not going to hex, right? Yeah, probably not. Um, there's like the best minions that you can hex are like totem golems, <laughs> probably, or tunnel trogs, which get too high. To do. Huge tunnel trogs. Seen a few of those this tournament. I mean, we have seen a couple of big game hunters. They are few and far in between. 
But that's not because they're not that good. It's just because of the lack of big minions. I uh, have to imagine that the horse rider will want to come and snipe and just grab board control. Although, the tot totem golem is probably one of the best times to establish it now that I think about it. Yeah, because you can't really play it next turn. You absolutely have to do hammer on the turn yeah. after. And you have the Argent Horse Rider the following turn anyways. Yeah, so when I thought about it, I was like, well, Totem Golem needs to really get some time on the board. Horse Rider has immediate impact always. Oh, that's a draw. Tunnel Trog. You yeah. could Hex. You could Hex here. Hex and Leopardome tunnel or trog. Tunnel Trog. Probably Tunnel Trog. Yeah, because well, you want to set up for your Doomhammer next turn as well. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of hammers involved in this game here. Both players setting up for a turn 5 Doom Hammer. But Oskaka's going to get uh, the first one. And if he chooses to clear, I think that is going to be a big advantage. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't mind using Hex. This is the biggest target that you'll ever use on it. So clear it, Hex. Perfectly fine. Okay. All right, uh, the horse rider comes in, controls more of the board. This is what's going to be a lot of like the sparring early on, just grabbing command of the board and making sure that you always uh, have more damage to leverage over it. But uh, we'll see. Now it's time to begin the Doomhammer Wars, mm -hmm. the second era of the Shaman Civil War. Oh, that is pretty good. And that's great to stop the Doom Hammers. Firebat also has the uh, the Druid Hero Power to help give him at least six more damage than his opponent over the course of three turns. Not bad draw either. It doesn't seem worth it to uh, to lava shock here though. Yeah, probably not. Maybe best to just develop the one drops in hero power. Mm -hmm. I wonder. Because you don't want to leave the Tunnel Trog stranded for too long. And if you're going to play Tunnel Trog and the Leopard Gnome, you might as well just hero power as well. So, put him down to 20 with 3 on the board. So, still looking for 13... Well, let's, let's take away the four. So looking for nine damage is, uh, is Oskaka. Well, Feral Spirit and Lightning Bolt here clears the board completely, and the Feral Spirit locks out the Doomhammer from really doing anything. Yeah, that's a huge swing from Firebat. If you can squeeze us in and not get retaliated some sort, because if his opponent has their own Lightning Bolts and other ways to improve the board, that's one way they can come back in. Well, it looks like that's going to happen, but... Um it also looks like, even though Oskaka has the life advantage and he's going to have a little bit of a board um, going into the next turn, Firebat just has a lot more cards he can draw into. Yeah, but he, he I think he was hoping for a Lava Shock eventually. Uh, he's got a lot of overload to manage through. Urshock? Not too bad uh, to get past it. This is probably one of the better targets to Urshock, if not the best. And I think you'd consider hero powering, because if if you hero power, uh, the the lava shock's actually great. Just those three and get a it, it, well, depending that you get a spell damage totem. I mean, yeah, and even other stuff like taunt totem wouldn't be the worst because you still have some damage absorption. What to do? Um, I think he's evaluating if he wants to play everything with the Argent Horse Rider as well, but I think the Spell Power Totem is the best plan. Nope. Don't worry, love. The yeah, 33% chance to land it. Did not. He's going to clear one. Or shock the other. Wow, full board. Oh, this is as full as they're going to get in this Oh, sorry, I meant full board clear, excuse me. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> and this is a, I mean, three minions is usually like the number of which is like, ah, you can still win if you see your opponent has three. I wonder if uh, Firebatch is going to clear this, try to get the Trog to do as much, and like 
Hmm. So you can burst flop face. a burst face and then clear both those smaller minions. It's so have... tight. I like, should probably draw that. Okay. Oh my goodness. Rockbiter, here we go. That puts him at 9. And next turn he has exactly 9. No, he has actually more than that. He has 11. Oh! 10? Oh, was that lethal? 15, no, I think it's 18? one off. He needs a spell damage totem. 50 50. Is it 18? No, it's, oh, no, there it is. Now it's lethal. That was I thought that was lethal. Now lost. it's lethal. You got the spell power totem. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. The, I mean, the clash of the world titans, man, are, uh, are just, just non stop back and forth exacties. Being able to just like barely narrow out, uh, like edge out the opponents, man. It's for the tournament life on the line. Very fun stuff back and forth. Uh, and now we go to Oskaka's Rogue, and Fireband has to win with the Shaman and the Mage. He's on a two-game losing streak. That can stop be it right tough. Here. That can be very tough. Um, I mean, I feel like the Miracle Rogue is, you know, again, a fairly inconsistent deck, but... Um, I feel if you just get a few early game tools, it ups your chances so much. Like, you just get like a backstab and an SI, and you beat out most aggressive decks. For Doomhammer. And I mean, it's it's mostly there already, if we look at that. But we do see the Tunnel Trog, that is, that is a big uh, development. Yep, Tunnel Trog into Totem Golem, into anything else, two mana that would help you establish anything would be great. Conceal, not useful. Fan is not great against Shaman. Normally it's great against aggro in general, especially Hunter, but not particularly too useful in this scenario. Um, oh, man. I think we have to save. Yeah, we have to save the coin. It's okay. Um, it's okay because you still have backstab SI, so you don't have to like take the damage that you would with the dagger, anyways. Mm -hmm. And then you can, even, even if you do, you can, um, you can farce your right back. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness! That's well, there's a better backstab, backstab. Play right now. Unless he wants to develop the SI7 agent because it's 3 attack and he can get ahead of the Feral Spirits. That's also a legitimate play. He can do pretty well against the Feral Spirits by, by just fanning because he will still have the spell damage. It's but true. I think either play works quite well. Backstab, SI indeed. Uh, just so that he can... Get that 3-3 three, three out preemptively. And uh, Rogue having that coin and that extra card, again, showing why it's such a big deal. Can Firebash strike back? Uh, I think this is where, awkward. Yeah, this is where like the, the very tough plays come through. Like, taunting up, do you really count on pushing with damage for that? Um, do you Wolf Rider? If, if you Wolf Rider, do you think it's going to get daggered? Is that going to work out? Yeah, very, very tough decisions here. Here's really where... It's like the, the point in the game where you usually start losing that things get uh, very complicated. What yeah, do? it's basically if you make one wrong move based off your opponent's hand, um, time. Uh, you, you, you lose, essentially. He plays board clear. I'm gonna really hope that he can hit something really nice. Another problem is that he has overload cards, and he, he's probably gonna need to use as much mana as possible. Uh, far, uh, far as you're not really doing much here, just kind of being a three-three. Oh, interesting. Doom Hammer. So he can use the ancestral knowledge. He can free up his mana for a Doom Hammer and start working. Mm -hmm. Seems like a, a good development. Definitely one of the better ones that you can ask for, given the circumstance. Job's done. And I think this is a pretty obvious Doom Hammer on turn five, but Rogue can't exactly punish this because he doesn't have the minions yet. 
doesn't really have anything. I guess he can develop a, a, a weapon finally, and then Thanos. Yeah. Because fan, fan is only if you just really need to draw, but next turn you can also mm. fan, eviscerate something if you play like a lot of minions, or it's like, there's, it gives you more options. Thanos is a very valuable card when it comes to, you know, supplementing a fan of knives to, to deal with like a lot of these small minions. But um, you have nothing going for you right now, so mm. I think the desperation might take over. We are Conceal? All right, I was not expecting that. Part. It's the extreme desperation has taken over. Because <laughs> he knows Doomhammer's coming, so he doesn't want any of it to get hit. Firebat's like, all right, fine, I don't mind hitting phase. One of those things where he probably wasn't going to hit the Thanos anyways, he wanted to Earthshock it. Now it's turn five, with still no clear play. He has to fan here, probably, to draw into something nice. Man, that feels bad. Two mana doesn't give you any room for minions either. That is a good card, though. Yeah, prep is very effective. Um, Firebat has the... Horse Rider and Earthshock play, though, to k grab the board. And now the damage is really going to start rolling in because Doom Hammer keeps hitting every single turn. 16 damage just from one card. And if you add uh, 6 with the Rock Biter, it's 22. Rogue just not going to work on much. Plus, you're tempted to hit the 2-1 the with the dagger. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, man. That, that could be a big supplement to the auctioneer but you really have to choose if it's going to be too late because it very well might be the thing is your best play this turn is just like gadget sand so prep hopefully shiv or something and if not it's just like flurry it's that's just also really weak oh i don't like the flurry i think it rather eviscerate a two one. Oh god eviscerate a two one yeah, maybe Tomb Pillager, the more you look at it, is, is slightly better, but... Uh. Yeah, if, like, the, the issue is if you play the Tomb Pillager... Like, when you play the Auctioneer combo thing, you're usually investing for your next turn. So if, if you're doing that next turn, then you're relying on staying alive and killing your opponent in two turns. And that right. is a really difficult call to make, but it seems like Oskaka is making that plan. He's going with this play. Horse Rider again, not not a bad card if you want to just put in the damage. Firebat needs those Rock Biters. All minions. All minions all the time. And he's going to really bank on his opponent not having some kind of Blade Flurry. He's got the Blade Flurry, but there's no um, weapon buff to supplement it. Yeah. But now would be the time to, to grab it. If he could, it'd be like right now at the top of his deck, he needs it right here. And if so, then we have a brand new game. No, but the Whoa. spell power Not helps, right. maybe? No, I don't know. It helps, but it, I don't think it's good enough. He needs, a, he needs like a, another fan or something. Oh. The problem is that... Hmm. If he, if he does the prep after the auctioneer, he can't play the deadly poison. Sap, um, sap, eviscerate. Oh man, it feels like he I definitely had these eviscerate the tunnel trog, right? He has to do that, yeah. Or sap it, I guess. No, I think you have to sap the tunnel truck. You have to eviscerate the 2-3. Um, I think you might face the Lepernome, perhaps. Or maybe not. Oh, he's going to flurry. Man. He's going to okay. flurry here. Well done. He's going to be down to 12. Which means the rock fighter ends the game. No! <laughs> Why did you do that, Froden? We were watching that game. <laughs> I, I just want to see the world champs go to game five.
2014 meets 2015. And uh, that's going to wrap it up. Uh, Firebat ties it up and sends it with his mage deck. The, the one that's unproven to see if he can take this series uh, back. But Oskaka, I mean, he's been playing pretty solidly. The, the question is, can that mage deck take down the rogue? Another unusual matchup. Yeah, it's again two like very wildly consistent decks. You asked for um, the openers is like everything. If if you get like a sick mana worm sorcerer apprentice opener, the rogue gets nothing. It's just gonna be a slaughter. But if the opposite happens, it's gonna be a slaughter in the other direction. Absolutely, mages on the coin, extra card, big deal. No mana worm yet though. Rogue. Not really much options though. Thalnos, I guess you can consider keeping, but everything else I think you toss back. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't mind throwing all three back here. Okay, yeah. keeps the Thalnos. Drew an SI. SI is one of those cards that you really want, but uh, no combo opportunity yet. No, not, you know, mirror image is not too bad to protect your loot hoarder interests. <laughs> it does happen to get answered by a Thalnos uh, fan of knives, so I wonder if that means a ping. Mana I like the mana worm ping. coin ping. Man, that that's so good. It sees back that temple, so you can't just easily lose those mirror images for nothing. Yeah, Firebat adapted perfectly. Guess. Ooh. This sucks. Oh. oh man. You can dagger, so next turn you deadly SI, but that gives up a lot of tempo. You float a mana, that and you give a turn it. for mana worm to develop. So many yeah. Options. It still doesn't kill it though. Oh, you're right. I was thinking you hit the. Yeah, there's taunts, derp. Um. Just playing a weapon, what it does is it just clears the two taunts next turn with the play suggested. I and I, yeah. I think that might still be the best play, but it, it's, it's much worse than we thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, can you... <sighs> just because he didn't dagger the previous turn, he got punished for it pretty badly. Because if he was able to dagger last turn, then he's able to... Uh, plan a two-turn kill on that with Shiv and the SI, but he can't. So ends up passing. Yep. I guess loot order in another mirror image, or do you just hold on to it? I guess he doesn't want to overextend it to Flurry. Yeah, there's no reason to. Poison SI, and then you hold on to the attack for the fan or do you I think I just like a fan of knives here the fan okay. of knives and then just attack into uh, mm. one of the taunt things and then next turn you can shiv it or you can shiv something else and combo activate the uh, SI okay. shiv to just take it oh, out wow much more of an aggressive play here well uh, uh, yeah I guess aggressive on the board but super defensive if you really think about it in the big picture because right. now Firebat has stuff to do. On turn four, he's pretty much just going to fireball, you know? Now he's just for Forgotten oh, Torch. God. Invest that three damage now. Get six later. It's pretty good interest rates. Yeah, but it costs you a draw still. That's how they get you. <laughs> Timeshares and Hearthstone. Yeah. I knew it. Ben Brod! <laughs> but, well, um... The rogue is still very healthy Thank here. Like 25 you. HP is, uh, is a long way to go. Yeah, but he's got. I mean, Fireback can easily draw into more burn and get it from the Discover Ethereal Conjurer. You want it? I got it. Flame Strike. Now I that's like useful that. against a gadget sand that's concealed. That's really useful against the gadget sand that's concealed. <laughs> I mean, it's worth evaluating if you want any of the two spells, but my I, my eye is on Flame Strike. Yeah, Cone of Cold is uh, is slightly better for tempo. 
if you're pushing for lethal, but the rogue really wins off of the effect of its cards. And it's going to work like this because turn seven is a uh, <laughs> this guy's turn so seven cool. is a gadget to conceal, right? Yeah, looks like it. So then you discover another spell, maybe a, another piece of burn. Wow, Vaporize is actually not bad. It's a very defensive uh, tool. It, it plays around the same thing. Yeah, it's not bad. Uh, definitely feeling like I, I like the um, the Dragon's Breath a little bit more just because it's burn and you're clearly trying to be very aggressive. All right, let's queue up the saxophone. Let's go. And then it's going to be abruptly interrupted with the record spin, the record cut out. Uh, but that, I believe that is what is going to happen here. Even though it doesn't look very good right now, he can basically burn a deadly poison to draw. I got the best deals anywhere. Yep. And then, and then get the coin from the um, uh, tomb pillager by suiciding it into oh, the six three. Man. Oh, and the prep is quite nice, but I think you need you need a bigger spell here. Yeah. Like, you have to coin so before you prep. Mm-hmm. Coin. And then conceal. Oh. Oh, you can't do the damage to the minion, though. Sure you can. You can just backstab your own minion. <laughs> that might not be too bad. Alright. Flame strike. Unless I'm in. Fire finds a way to do more damage, like if he wants to fireball Frostbolt, but I think Flame Strike, this is kind of what you picked it up for it. And Oskaka, oh, just has to look down, blink twice, and reevaluate his life choices. We've all been there, man. All right, well, he still has a few cards. Um, he actually has a sick play, but I don't think you'd make it. You can Farseer the Manworm, and then Azure Drake, and then backstab it for three. <laughs> But I think you'd Whoa, want all the that health you can get. Sick man, <laughs> that's awesome. I like it. You can Drake first, and Oskaka is the kind of player who would think of something to do that too. He's he's kind of next level with those kinds of plays. I like it. If it's if the most aggressive to, board play, he might feel like uh, the Farseer is better to heal himself, or he might just Van Cleef. But that is pretty cute. And more than cute, it's, it's actually the right move if he, uh, ah. wants to survive. Aww. I was, I was like, oh, maybe he does. Oh, I guess he doesn't. All How right. much is this? It's a lot. <laughs> Four plus three is nine, plus two is 11, plus uh, four is 15. So not enough just yet. I would have considered going for that as, um... Wow. As you had the uh, the remainder of the damage for next turn, I guess Firebat is actually scared scared of dying. It's the only Possibly. explanation. His opponent's drawn a lot of cards. Mm -hmm. There, there is the Azure Drake and the Shiv. You can also prep Shiv for Van Cleef and backstab the three two. I like that's it. pretty nasty. Talk about being able to win. Oh uh, yeah, and also cold blood to add one more uh, trick uh, proc for the Van Cleef to get an additional two two. And now here comes here comes the train, the pain train. Azure Drake needs to pick up something pretty good. Arcane missiles. I think you might fireball face. He's playing arcane missiles for four. That's pretty risky. You have to really hit the Azure Drake very well. There's 20 damage and a Not flurry two. plus uh, cold blood it's is lethal. lethal. It's, lethal. it's, lethal. it's like be one a over lethal. Turn lethal. And he that has would to fireball or get really lucky with arcane missiles or a spell slinger. Oh my god. That's that is it. death. The 2015 champion brings it back in game five. This series was hype, man. I like it.
My God. And I, I mean, Firebat. I think Firebat had that game if he just went all out face the turn before, and he had the remaining damage. Um, like I think it was five off lethal, and he had the. Uh, that card is so bad. I forget what it's called. I think it's called Dragon's Breath. Yeah. Yeah. And that's gonna do it. So Oskaka stays alive and goes to day number three. Mm -hmm. But it was by the skin of his teeth, and uh, Firebat really ended up playing pretty safe. Which is, uh, you know, a lot of respect to Oskaka, but sometimes you show too much respect, yeah. and that's what gets you. Well, Oskaka does advance for uh, tomorrow's round of eight, where we get uh, we get down to business and people run away with money at the end. Um, Firebat will not be joining them, but uh, we still have one spot left. It's going to be RDU or Super JJ. RDU, of course, is playing uh, you know, his team's lineup and Super JJ, the one with the mid-range Shaman. And that's coming up in uh, just a few minutes, guys. All right, so thanks so much, everybody, who uh, joined us so far. I want to give a big shout-out to Geek Fuel, uh, the Curse Network, and Hearthpone, as well as the Innkeeper. Uh, that helps you keep all of your card collections synced with all the decks that you want. So just check that out uh, while we take a break. When we come back, our final series of day number two. So don't go anywhere. Curse Trials continues right after this break.